Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. We have here a critical piece of shop gear down. Compressor orb down. I mean, for safety's sake, I've been learning Australian. I think I got it right, but I tagged it out. So that no one would use it. Of course, I'm the only guy in the shop, but you know, sometimes you have a little a wee dram of the pure, you know what I'm saying? Shaky, shaky. Hands off, sneaky. Okay, now we just gotta let the uh, Sullivan flash off, and away we go. Why are you so long time? We got a bad case of the crack split right half into uh, straight around the bung and into the meat right in here runs right along and up would probably end somewhere around here uh, what we'd oh god what would you do i was going to pull this out and weld it and then i thought better of that because welding pressure vessels is dangerous and two this thing uses oil to lubricate it so guaranteed there's going to be some oil in here what we have is a bomb so if you needed to fix this you were in a third world country you didn't care about life or limb, killing other people, killing yourself, you could fix this. Absolutely you could. What you do is you would consider that this has some oil in it, so you'd have to fill it full of water, then you get hydrogen embrittlement, or you put, fill it full of inert gas from your welder, grind this out, weld it up, hope for the best. This is a pressure vessel though. We do not fuck with pressure vessels. Uh, while it's down for repairs, it'd be a good time to maintain it, service it. It's due for its quarter century uh, bit of attention. So we will change the oil now, of course, it'd be a good time to pull the head off, deglaze the cylinders. No, 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 no. The prime directive when it comes to machinery, cars, anything, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You do the maintenance, but you don't go digging and making yourself more problems. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take out this pressure switch. I'm going to take out that fitting. And then we're going to weld this to that. And then we'll go ahead and cut the tack, the little welds there. And pull this right off as a unit. And then plumb it into yonder receptacle. Now, if you'll indulge me, I'll give you the quick and dirty of how one of these reciprocating compressors works. Just the tip, mind. You might find you like it. It's called a reciprocating compressor because there is a reciprocating piston in here. This is essentially an engine, a two-stroke engine. We'll get to that. Here's the control system, here's the motor, and there is the power transmission. Now it starts off, you get your poking bit, and you stick it in the poking bit receptacle. Single phase, household voltage. Comes into here, into your contactor slash pressure switch. You can see here when we Flip the switch, it pushes down on this, makes contact, gives power to the motor. This is a single phase induction motor. If you just gave this voltage out of the wall, it would not turn, it would hum. It has a start winding and a run winding. And they're 90 degrees separated from each other. But the voltage going into them is not 90 degrees separated from each other. Remember, it's AC, so it's sinusoidal. So what we need to do is we need one, the start winding to have the wave on a certain spot. And then we need the run winding to have the wave on a different spot. So they're electrically separated by 90 degrees. How do we achieve that? In the start winding, we send it through a capacitor. That changes the phase angle. So it separates that AC going in. It retards one or advances the other. Then, once the thing is actually turning, we turn off the start winding. So this capacitor only runs for a little bit while it's starting up, and then once it's up to speed, there's a centrifugal switch that senses it's up to speed, disconnects this winding. Then it's just running on this capacitor and the run winding. This capacitor is just for power factor correction so that um, your voltage curve, your voltage sinusoidal, 
and your current sinusoidal don't get too far apart because that's uh, the power company doesn't like that essentially okay so that drives a pulley over to a fan and a flywheel that flywheel helps helps uh, smooth out the reciprocal motion so there'll be a crank in here that converts the rotary motion into reciprocating motion a pistone up and down air goes in there's no valves like in an engine they're little tiny poppet valves looks like uh, dimes little pennies and essentially when it pulls in it seats this one and sucks in from here when it pushes out it seats this one and pushes into the tank and that's how we compress the air how do we prevent air from back feeding into this there is a check valve a one-way check valve so it can only go in and then there's a sense line that comes over here uh, bar bars against or forces against these springs and once it overcomes the spring tension it dechooches this so this opens up so once you're at pressure this opens up your motor doesn't turn anymore and that's pretty much all there is to it so you adjust how much pressure you want in the tank by the preload on the spring and then if you go over pressure this is a relief valve a poppet relief valve so you never build up too much pressure in here in case this goes wonky that's really all there is to it this is splash lubricated and this of course the head especially gets hot because you're taking a column of air and compressing it the heat that was in this column is now in this tiny little column heats up the air basically you need good airflow and there is a fan you want these things to last if you're giving them a hot supper put an external fan on them that's really all there is to it uh, some air filtration keep the nuggets out and it's in there oh it's still spotless look at that nice and clean in the shop 25 years look at this piece of junk went to take that little screw off this is the first time the initial run for shame bought this uh, in Ireland figured She'd be a skookum choocher. Nah, the capacitor's interesting. No PCBs contained adjustable combustible fluid. Aerovox. So this must be the start capacitor because we have the input here and then both windings. So a winding over here and a winding over on this side. And then this is just the, the power conditioning capacitor for power factor correction on the regular winding. So if you ever got a problem with your compressor, here is the first place. Ah, tripping the breaker, of course, it's the first place. And then these crap out. And then the centrifugal switch on here craps out quite a bit. Of course, we have a belt power transmission, so if you hear squealing, chances are that's it. Well, the other thing that could go wrong, of course, is these could dry out and blow up. You would see if they blew up, but if 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 you're suspecting them and you're not sure there is a way to test it we get out our digital multimeter put it on ohm scale we'll stick it on across the leads five ohms so that's the uh, yeah resistance we got 120 volts uh that'll give us 25 amps in rush nameplate is 15 amps so we're right in the ballpark we're not out to lunch if this was like one ohm you'd be questioning if there's something wrong with this or if it's like 200 ohms, you know you got a problem with the windings. Also, if it's grounded, which it is, what the F? Oh, <laughs> Aha. these two were touching. Okay, we'll keep those from touching and then we'll try it again. There we go. Whew. So we have no continuity between phase and ground which is a good thing now what we do is we put it on farads and we have to disconnect it now and we'll put it on farads and see how many microfarads it it has and this one has 213 microfarads and the bigger one has twenty nine. Oh well wow, twenty nine far fewer might have gotten those mixed up 
Although, if this is more skookum, this would be, because the start capacitor is only on temporarily, so the run capacitor actually has to be more skookum. I might have got those wrong. This is the overload for the motor, overload protection directly on the motor. So this will pop out if the motor gets overloaded. But generally, the breaker pops way before this anyway. I don't think I've ever reset that. I uh, clearly never had a problem that I can remember with it. Now we'll get over here. I've got the guard off. Looking at the belt. It's in fine shape. No chunks, no glazing, no cracks. Pulleys are all on and not fretting. What you want to do is just give everything a good solid reef and have a smell, have a look. Make sure, every, yeah, good tension. One of the things about the fractional horsepower belts is they don't need to be singing tight. Right on. This thing's a beauty. Here's the one way check valve backflow preventer. Teflon bushing in there, and you can see daylight. So when there's pressure on this end, it forces that up against and seats it, prevents backflow back into the cylinder. And now we are just about ready to tack weld all this together so that we can cut this and we maintain our orientation. I got some scabby stuff there and some paint, so we're not gonna go with the 7018 low hydrogen. We'll do the farmer rod. Mud rod, 6011, 330 seconds. That's 330 seconds around. So how much amperage, um, a good rule of thumb is if you know the inches, that's 90 thou, you three divided by 32 is 90 thousandths of an inch. We start with 90 amps and we go from there. It's interesting, the guys like the pipeliners, you, you see them and they'll, be, they'll have a helper right on the machine to, and, and they'll be yelling at them up, down, up, up. And just as they go around and do their passes, they want different heat levels for different positions. It's real interesting. It's quite quite a lot of art, some artfulness involved, no doubt. In this case, we will have zero artfulness. Uh, just gonna gob in some weld there. Okay, I forgot to hit the record, sorry. But you can see there, there's a hole right there. I'll show you how to recover. Recover from even the earliest hole. Now that's real thin gauge material, so that's why, but stick is a challenge. So what we're going to do is we are going to fill that hole. What we do is we apply some metal and then we pull away and let it cool down. Essentially tacking over and over and over. And we're getting there. Almost there. There we go. That's it. You can see what I did there. I was trying to put weld in here, but I know that's too thin. So I, I move it over here while this cools, because this is a nice thick gauge of material, and just let it cool here, and then bring it over, whop a little bit in there, a little bit of heat, and then bring it back over. And that's how you fill the hole. This is a artist grade MIG weld. Old Indian trick here. We're gonna clean this up with some 7014. It's what's known as jet rod. It freezes real slow. So it's not as, as chunky. You'll see. And no one's the wiser. Freedom, horrible freedom. I put all the paint out in the shed, which seemed like a good idea at the time. But uh, now I gotta brave the wolves in the snow. And eh, she's frozen cock stiff, so I'm gonna wait to paint this. But what we gotta do is we gotta adapt this into the tank and the tank is all BSP fittings British um, with bonded seal rings now this is hot so we can't just use a hose we have to use the copper tubing so we get a ferrule uh, compression fitting to 
some sort of JIC hydraulic fitting. Yeah, <laughs> well, I gotta see what I can fabric cobble here in the shop, but if not, I might need to pause here and rush out and go get some stuff before the, before the getting spot closes. So this is the thing that goes in the thing that goes in the thing. So here we have the ferrule compression fitting. That appears to be half inch NPT and we just got a little nylon uh, what do they call that quick connect fitting. So let's have a look here in the junk drawer see what we can find maybe uh, oh what's this well I'll be there's no way oh yeah that'll fit and what's that that is 3 8 okay so 3 8 national pipe to uh, uh, get some hydraulical fittings here we are going to need a JIC to come off of that thing. So Joint International Committee-8, there we go, to a ah, half inch national pipe thread. Now we need a bush. Everybody needs a bush. There we go. Ha! <laughs> oh my God, it's never that easy, ever. We got the dingus end here and we need the slight curve to the left on the head. Now this is a compression fitting. I haven't gone over these before but essentially well they they work on compression. They seal on compression. Here's the nut. Inside there that ring that's the ferrule and this goes in like so. It's easier to do when you're not single-handed in the dark and when when this tightens down it compresses that ring around the pipe and that's what seals it. Okay, here's the mock-up. Bit of a rat's nest, but good enough for the girls I go out with to temporarily test it. Plug it in, see if she chooches. Wasn't expecting that just to go. Lots of leaks. Right on. We'll disassemble this, take care of the leak, slap some paint on her, stick her onto the bench, Forget about it for the next quarter century. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.